Hi guys, this is Matthias coming at you here with a video where I hope to show you how you can go absolute bananas by flanking at the right place, in the right way, and at the right time. Starting off here at Argon Forest, and the first guy that I encounter during this flank, he actually did see me coming, or he was at least prepared. However, the next guys here, they do not in any way expect me to come from this direction. Three guys here I take out that was on their mortars. Obviously that is an indication that they believe that they are safe from that direction. But as you can tell, except for that specific scout who probably wanted to run for cover, these other guys are clearly focusing their thing. attention in the opposite direction compared to where I came from. That is the power of flanking. Now in the beginning of the video here I also want to explain that not all the moments here in this video are going to be specifically based on flanking. You can go beast mode or have a good run even if you face your opponents head on. Now, I don't think it's a secret that I use smoke a lot. And it has a variety of different uses of course. One of the uses is to be able to cover open areas of the map where you need to move from one area to another. One of the best examples of that in Battlefield 1 is on River Somme where you are on the attacking side playing Conquest Assault. Okay, we made it to the trench. Oh, there's a lot of death in front of us here. So now, in a situation like this, if you do not have smoke, I would suggest you to go for the C flag instead of the B flag, because that way you can actually get to the flag while staying relatively well behind cover. Reaching the B flag from A, however, is really, really tricky if your opponents expect you and they want to stop you from doing so. This, however, is where smoke comes in. Now there are a little bit of obstacles here and there, like this uh, burning tank for example, that is a part of the map actually, it's not a wreck of a tank. You can use it as cover while resupplying your uh, smoke grenades, and also these boats, and this trench that is uh, right in front of the B flag, or right in front of this windmill that is the B flag, can also be used as cover, but aside from that, the area that I just covered is relatively open. I don't think I would have made it uh, this far this particular time without smoke grenades. Now once in the windmill, the need of smoke is drastically diminished. There we did it. <clears throat> so back to Argon Forest again, and we're at the beginning of a round. And what I notice here is that my enemy team is trying to start off the round by trying to attack my team where we normally would enter the C flag, meaning at the southern part of the bridge. Now what that does is that since I'm under the bridge on their side of the bridge, so to speak, that means that I can basically shoot them from the side and from behind. Basically this gives me a flanking position or the equivalent of a flank. Now the thing that I'm doing here, going from the west side of the map to the east side of the map before um, attacking D, it almost seems like I'm trying to mimic what happened in the first clip. Fact is that it's unintended this time, even though this is one of the normal ways to go to D regardless. I realize obviously that there's somebody in the bunker, and I feel like if I go directly to D here, then I wouldn't know whether or not I should attack the guys in the bunker or the guys on the left side of the bunker. So instead I go around it. That way, hopefully, I will end up in a great flanking position. You can imagine how surprised I was finding this bunker empty. I guess I might as well just check the other bunker as well, right? Now I know that uh, the weapon I'm using, the SMG-18, is rather controversial. A lot of people don't like this weapon, they think it's overpowered, and you might actually argue that this video confirms that. However, I also want to show you that you can get basically the same kind of kill streak with several other weapons as well. One of them, which you're going to see in this video, is the default weapon of the assault class, the MP18 Trench, which is one of my favorites. Personally, I have to say that the only thing that truly favors this weapon is the magazine size.
Alright, so there's no denying the power of this weapon though. However, right now, I'm starting to run a little low on ammo. And you can imagine my disappointment when I pick up a support kit, only to find it with neither the ammo crate or the ammo pouches. I need ammo! I have no ammo. <laughs> Fuck, I have no ammo. So yeah, I think that most people by now know the way I try to solve this issue, if I can solve it at all, that is. The first thing is what you saw me try to do, which failed, and that is to pick up a support kit and try to resupply myself. Now, the second best solution, or which the only other solution, is of course to pick up the kit of a dead player, and to the best of my ability, use whatever is left of whatever that player spawn in with. Oh, I got a Hell Eagle, okay. So yeah, considering the aggressiveness of how this round started from the other team, that is, it's quite surprising, actually, that we've been pushing them so far back so fast. However, me and one of my squad mates did have a fantastic start on this round, and that probably plays a relatively big part in the outcome of the overall match at this point in time. See, I'll show you one more clip from that specific round later on in the video, but it tends to be a little bit repetitive if I just keep going from the same round. This is Suez, and this is going to be one of those examples where I'm not actually flanking at all. Now, the main reason why I'm putting in this clip right here is that I want to highlight that you don't need the SMG weight in order to do good as an assault player. This is the default weapon, the very first weapon you get playing this class in Battlefield 1. Oh. Check out the damage I deal with these dynamites. 98 damage and no kill. Isn't that irritating? No! It needs to be said that you don't have to play Assault to go ham. You can do this with every class, and I'll show you a little bit of support and medic gameplay as well. Now, me, I don't play Scout, I don't like sniping, that's just me, but I'll add a little bit of variety here using a medic and support as well, and hopefully you will enjoy the rest of the video. My name is Matthias, and I want to thank you all for watching. Oh!
No! Because I dropped a med kit there. That was a nice little kill streak. We have taken objective butter. Every day I'm on the left. From 30 minutes to, to 60 to, to join my friend. That's the average. And then game freezes and then go again. Thanks for the revive. Yeah, I switched the team somehow. Now I need to find ammo, ammo, ammo. Uh, can you kick someone from the squad? Yep. Hang on. Thank you, Mary. Oh, fuck. <clears throat> There's one more. Support is probably right where you killed that guy. No. One guy survived. That was a good flank though. One guy survived it. More knowledgeable.
No. Oh.